hey, I don't want to waste your time, so let's get to it. First up, jack up the car, take off the wheel, and use a jack, a jack stand, and the wheel to prevent the car from rolling. I also use a brake to stop the car from moving. Component removal. The first thing I usually do is to loosen up the caliper bolts. These two caliper bolts are usually hard to get them out. It is recommended for you to use on WD-40 an extension pipe and a hammer. If it gets too difficult, you can use a torch to remove them up. In my particular case, I just used a wrench and a hammer, just like so. On this step, I'm removing the caliper guide pins. These two caliper guide pins are usually famous for snapping. It is recommended for you to change them up with a set of brand new ones. They are not expensive to get it from the store. There are usually two types of caliper guide pins. The slave that I'm just removing. And the master. It usually sits on the top and it has a rubber bushing. If you're planning to reuse the caliper guide pins, you can place them in a container for later cleanup. So now I'm detaching the caliper from the caliper bracket and I'm placing the caliper on top of the control arm. You can also suspend the caliper using a bungee cord to avoid stress and tension placed on the brake hose. Here's a quick comparison. This is an OEM old brake pad. It has never been replaced. And this is the brand new one that I'm about to replace. And now I am removing the caliper bracket. One thing that has been neglected or never mentioned in brake job tutorials is that these bolts are never being replaced. These troublemakers are famous for snapping, breaking, seizing up, or stripping. So do yourself a favor and change them up, replace them with brand new ones so you don't have a headache in the future if you have to service the brakes again. And the last step will be removing the brake drum. You can use a rubber mallet if you want to keep the brake drum. Otherwise, you can use a hammer and heat it in a crisscross pattern because they are usually seized up. Component cleanup. Make sure you use protective gloves, protective glasses, and a mass respirator during this step. And this optional step, just for the sake of gratification of me doing a clean job, I am removing the accumulation of superficial rust. I am using a wire brush attached to an electric drill to speed up this process. You can also get the same results by using sandpaper. I am also cleaning the studs, so it will be easier to put on and off the wheel lock nuts. After the completion, you can degrease the parts by using an acetone based degreaser. cleaning very meticulously the caliper bracket and the threads inside of this. This is also a great technique to clean up the slats for the guide pins by using a pair of cotton swabs. This will remove the old grease and the dust accumulated from years and years. Optional step, caliper painting. I am not doing a full tutorial on how to paint brake calipers. You can do your own research on YouTube. 
there are plenty of tutorials on this. The most common materials used are heat resistant primers, heat resistant base coats, the color of your election, and heat resistant clear coats. So now I am detaching the brake hose from the caliper. I'm using a box and an aluminum tray to catch all the brake fluid dripping from it. Safety first, make sure you have protective gloves and protective glasses when you're handling brake fluid. This is also bad for your paint, so make sure you cover all those adjacent painted areas to avoid corrosion on those parts. Component prep. So now we are reattaching the brand new caliper. We are using a brand new banjo bolt and a pair of brand new copper gaskets. I am reattaching the brake hose and I'm tightening down the brand new banjo bolt. All the components will be torqued down to a spec later on. So here is a quick comparison. It is important to compare the parts before you install them. And yes, they are the same size. As you can see, I picked drilled slotted brake drums just for the looks. It is also important to clean the contact surfaces on your brake drums and brake discs because all the manufacturers place grease on them just to avoid selling rusted or corroded products. Like I mentioned before, I am replacing the caliper guide pins and the caliper bolts. As you can see, the older ones have stripped heads. You can get them from the official Nissan parts store and they are pretty cheap. They are $2 a piece. I don't recommend for you to get them from the Home Depot because they have a different thread spec and they will not withstand stopping the weight of the whole car. I am also testing this bolt if they can fit in the proper thread. On this step, it is important for you to use non-synthetic grease, otherwise all the rubber components will swell up and they will cause problems down the road. So I am lubricating the guide pin slots with the same guide pins. It is also a good protection from moisture and dust if you lubricate the rubber boots. I can now install the rubber boots on the caliper bracket, just like so. I am admitting that I used too much of this blue thread lock but it is important to use treadlock to avoid the bolts from loosening up when the car is back on the road. I am installing a brand new rubber bushing on the master guide pin. Make sure you lubricate this rubber boot with non-synthetic grease. One thing I don't do is to lubricate the sliding hardware clips. That's because after a month, the grease will be pushed out by the brake pads or it will be washed off by the rain. So that's why I am using CRC this quiet. Honestly, I am not sponsored by CRC, but I can recommend this product because it will act like a layer of rubber and it will prevent high frequency vibrations that will produce squeaks on your brakes.
so this product I will be applying underneath the sliding hardware clips so they will stick to the brake calipers another product I am not sponsored by is the Acker Bono brake pads the Acker Bono brake pads are engineered to be quiet I picked this up over the OEM ones because the OEM ones tend to make grinding noises when the temperature drops. For this specific model, I picked out the Acarbono Pro Act. Here are some advantages of using high quality brake pads. As you can see on this picture, the rims are really nasty. If you picked up high quality brake pads, you will prevent this dust material sticking on your rims and on your paint because this material becomes acidic with the rain. Another thing that I didn't mention is that they have wear indicators. They will notify you when the brakes are low. I am also using CRC this quiet since we don't have sliding hardware clips with Teflon coating and the brake pads are not Teflon coated as well. So I'm using some CRC on the shims even though it is not recommended. It is just a preventive step to avoid squeaky brakes. Another preventive step is to apply a distributed layer of NECs on the wheel hub. This will prevent any disc drum or disc brake to seize up against the wheel hub. It is also good to use a copper based NECs because it is compression resistant. So now we are ready for component installation. I am placing in the brand new brake drum. I am also placing back the rubber grommet that covers up the bullet hole. Beautiful, we can now install the caliper bracket with the bolts we just prepared. Just like so. Nice. It is time for the hardware clips, one on the bottom and one on the top. Now we can slide in the caliper brake pads. This brake pad that I'm about to install has the wear indicator. It sits on the back and make sure you don't break it when you're installing it. Perfect. This looks great and clean. It is time for us to install the caliper. You can slide in. You install the guide pins that we just prepared and remember the slate guide pin goes always on the bottom of the bracket and the master guide pin with the rubber bushing goes always on the top of the bracket fluid replacement Necessary only when you're replacing the calipers. If you have painted calipers, this is a crucial step to protect the paint on them. You just need a couple of plastic bags and some duct tape. You place the plastic bag on top of the caliper, then you punch a hole, and then you tape down around the bleeder holes. This is the easiest, the fastest, and the cheapest way to protect the paint on your calipers and also protect the burr metal surrounding it. I am not worried about the paint on these calipers 
because I will be painting the calipers in the near future. So let's open up the engine compartment to locate the brake fluid reservoir. We make sure the lid is clean so you don't introduce contaminants to the system. Then we open up the reservoir. Great. This is a solo bottle that you can make at home. A lot of YouTube tutorials have covered this and how to make your own. This bottle consists of a plastic bottle filled with some brand new brake fluid. This bottle is connected to a clear vinyl tubing which is one fourth of an inch in internal diameter and you can secure this one to the bleeder valve. I don't need a zip tie because it is a tight fit otherwise if it's loose please use some zip ties on both ends to secure this clear tubing so now let's take a look to the owner's manual in this particular case it is a 09 nissan altima coupe this information will be located in technical and consumer information section 9 this is also for the models of 2008 to 2013 nissan altima coupes and sedans so we will be using for brake and clutch fluid genuine nissan super heavy duty brake or equivalent dot 3 and that 3 is the one we are using now i bleeded out all the old fluid by purchasing two large bottles of that 3 brake fluid now we can open up the bleeder valve and then we start pressing down the brake pedal with our two feet. Do it continuously until you don't see any bubbles coming out from the bleeder bulb. Make sure also not to empty out the reservoir so you can fill out with brand new dot 3 brake fluid up to the max line. To prevent spills on the engine compartment, please use a funnel that will prevent you to spill down brake fluid which is highly corrosive. After seeing there are no air bubbles coming out from the system and the fluid is clear, we can now close the bleeder valve and disconnect the clear tubing. Then we replace the rubber cup on the bleeder ball. This car in particular is due for brake fluid service. So it is recommended for you as the owner to take a look to the owner's manual to see the interval in terms of years and mileage to determine when to change or service your brake fluid. Another indicator will be the color. The old brake fluid will look brown or dark while the brand new one will be clear or golden. We make a final test by pressing down the brake pedal just to make sure the pedal doesn't feel spongy and it's returning correctly. A final test to the emergency brake. And then you can close the reservoir. If the brake pedal is not working correctly, make sure you have enough fluid inside the reservoir there are no air bubbles trapped in the system and you have no leaks. And this concludes uh, today's uh, project. Things that I didn't cover on this video were how to paint the brake calipers and how to bleed out the brake fluid from the whole system. But those are topics for future videos. I hope you enjoyed this content. Thank you very much and I see you next time.